To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. We got a very special birthday. Yes, we do. Boy, a birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you say birthday, right? That's how 50 Cent says it. He does. Birthday. He does. It is your birthday. <clears throat> Why are you clearing your throat? Like you're about to sing a song. You want to sing it, Nickweez? <laughs> no. She don't know how to sing that damn song. <laughs> 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 they want a duet. No. No, no. Nobody they, wants me to sing. They all want y'all to sing. Duet. Here we go. <laughs> Can I go now? Yeah. Both of y'all. Look, it's both of y'all on the TV. Surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. We always harmonize, though. It's always good. And so this is a surprise shot dedication to Chris. It's also Chris's birthday today. And I believe he also got some good news that he's cancer free. Oh, do you confirm um, that? I, or he's got an appointment to confirm, I think, like next week. Uh, but everything was looking clear and good. So congratulations. We wish you well. To, to you, Chris. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. To Hopefully. the best of health. Cheers. I picked this one out for you, Chris. <sighs> Chris, are you a 19-year-old girl? <laughs> I picked it out for him. <laughs> we just drank fireball for you, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know what? At least that handle that Jen brought over for one surprise <laughs> shot fuck? way back when is finally gone, so it's no more no more temptation for John. If you, if you request a real shot, we'll take it. <laughs> I'm just saying. You say that like you don't drink Fireball straight from the bottle. I do drink it from the bottle like a boss. I'm sorry I've been a little out of it this week. So here's the thing. This website, we're paying $130 a month for this fucking website for 100,000 visits, which seems like a lot. But then like I got 246,000 last month and they kept emailing me like, um, excuse me, sir. Like you need to upgrade your plan. I was like, dude, I'm already paying you 130 bucks. Like what the fuck? Upgrade it to what? Like I was like, no. This you is know? the conversation you're actually having with customer support. <laughs> and, and I can actually see that. Like the live, the transcript of the live chat would actually look like this. No. So no, literally. Literally. I know. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, okay, like I got a lot more. Like, what the fuck? I'm still paying you 130 bucks. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So they were like, sorry, this is a good, um, what was it? Like a, a good faith program where, you know, we'll let you have more visits, but, you know, you're going to need to upgrade. I'm like, bitch, this, you're running a business. I would never run a good faith business, motherfucker. <laughs> like, this is and also is a murder podcast. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> good faith. So at the last day, I switched over completely to a different website. I had to like upload all the posts, like every fucking thing. And so I think I got it worked out. But now you guys can be able to log in with your Patreon email. All you got to do is put your email that you signed up for Patreon in. And these stories, you can see all the photos and comment on there. And that'll be just for you guys. And then, you know, eventually I'll make those some posts public and some posts private, stuff like that. But it's mainly just for you guys. It's a pretty cool system. So, so it's like their username is their email from Patreon. Yeah. And that's their ticket to get in. Yeah. So I guess you put your email in it and then it emails you a one-time click link and then you... Cool. And you can... When Stay did you long. do that? All this week. Yeah, it took it took a long time. I'll guys. have to check like, my junk email. Fucking long time to do, but should be better for you guys because I know um, some people. Obviously, if you're just listening to the podcast, you you're wondering what photos we're looking at and stuff like that. And I have not been posting them for a while because of this website issue. I knew I wanted to move, but I didn't know where to go. So mm. I, went, I, am I went to the, the I went to the dark web. Obviously, <laughs> we're. Before we start, <laughs> before we start, I think I am actually going to grab a beer because both of those are looking at me. And they're they're, like, they're hey, telling you how delicious they are. You. This is a request from the Discord. I don't know who requested it, but no one has claimed it. So let me go and see who requested it. It's a fantastic story. I never heard of it before. There, it was really hard to get accurate information for this story. And one of the big sources I used was the Miami herald but it was the spanish version <laughs> so so i had to translate a lot of it and i i didn't pull any of the information from bullshit blogs or youtube videos or anything like that because i can't trust that shit right but i think i got it mapped out pretty good it is a weird case 
And I, I'm surprised I've never heard it before. And let's see who requested that. So I'm in the Discord right now under the request. This also tells you guys that I do actually really read these requests. Except like, for the ones that I submit. Correct. Well, yeah, obviously. Well, I, our, our, our requests don't matter. I put in um, a good request this morning. Hmm. So this one was requested by... And don't don't spoil it for these people. For, these people. Don't spoil it for Jen or Nikwees. Did you hear that he called us these people? But these are these this people. is requested by Shram. And the story is of Cayetano Santos Godino, the youngest Argentinian serial killer to have lived. Hmm. And his name, there's something very unique about it, but like I said, don't spoil it. But his name is El Petiso Orejudo. Tonight we are going to Argentina. Now, I couldn't find a, an exact address or anything. This is an old case. So I'm actually starting this tonight, December 3rd, 1912. Ooh. And we do... Go ahead, Jen. What'd That's you the same year as the Titanic. Mm. What, when it was built or what? When the, it went on... When it set sail in April. And, oh, uh, no, wait. Was it? Yeah. Oh, God. I'm pretty oh, sure. Y- you sounded so <laughs> confident I wasn't going to... According to TikTok... God. <laughs> no, it is 1912. I know it's 1912. I just don't know what day in April. April 15th is when it sank. Tonight, we're going to Argentina. I don't have an exact address, just that we are in Argentina. December 3rd, 1912, the Argentinian police discover a corpse. And I do have a photo of the body. It is a three-year-old child. Oh, it's, oh I already don't like this. Well... I didn't pay you to like this, Jen. I paid you to show them titties. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. First of all, <laughs> this isn't that kind of show. Second of oh, all. That's our after show. <laughs> you have never seen these titties. <laughs> you see one pair, you've seen them all, Jen. <laughs> it's like balls. These titties they're aren't the ball- same either. They're, they're shrinking. All the balls look the same unless you got a third one. Which I actually, there was a guy in, in my unit that had a third ball. It was so fucking weird. What? Yeah. It was <laughs> That's like people who have three nipples. I think you have three nipples. Yeah, it was a third ball. Like it was there. It would we, be more like a third boob, honestly. No, it is a ball. No, yeah. he, she's saying like the, the like commonality. Like the, compa- the comparer, you know, it would be like a third boob. Yeah, something. secondary. Well, no, balls are primary sex organs. I'm saying like visual, visual mound oh. type. You know what I mean? Wouldn't he, he didn't like opt to have it removed or anything. Fuck. Why would you? <laughs> what the fuck? That's he's, um, he's no, no, a, no, that oh, is extra, the, extra fertile. Oh, okay. he, he's a third more of a man than all the other men. <laughs> what the fuck? That's like God. Is he sure it was real and not like a tumor? Like you're like winning the lottery. Yeah. Are you real. though? Are you winning the lottery? I, I wish I had three balls because I always what? have. To, because I have to pee all the time now that I'm getting older, and like I but need more of. You a, do realize that having that a ball does not to hold do. your pee. Like that's your kidneys, not your balls. You can probably feel it down there, but like. All right, tonight we're going to December third, nineteen twelve. Police find a corpse, and I'm, I'm not good at names, but Jesualdo Gallodano is the baby's name, and this is a baby, and this is the photo right here. This is of the decedent. So trigger warning. Oh, oh God! Here's that's the a death baby. photo, or that's just a photo. No, that's the death photo. Uh, one thing you can tell right off the bat: you look at his feet, look at the baby's feet. They're gone. No, no, they're there. They're just tied. You see this little rope? Oh, okay. Rope, rope. Oh. Well, I couldn't see the feet. Is it? Are they in a sack? No, Jen. This is a picture from a hundred years ago. It's oh, just, there's a foot. Okay. Um, in the face, you can't really notice anything. Looks beaten. Yeah, very beaten. You see it right there, and there's some other traumatic injuries. The police find this corpse, three years old, and this was December 3rd, 1912. Hands and feet both tied. The body was beaten. Nearly every bone was broken. A rope was twisted so tight around the, the child's neck that it was, so it was strangled too, that it was left there in fear that it was actually like holding it in place. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't even cut off that at all. And there was something that was even worse worse than than that and I, I know you can't tell going back to the photo you can't tell because it's black and white and really old but on the the head area there was this the child was beaten with this rock right oh. here and then lodged inside the front of its forehead was this rusted nail so this is the nail oh right there God. so this shit just got real yeah quick so 
Ah oh, man, I just brought down the mood mm-hmm, fucking yep. quick. That's, we're we're at a <laughs> we're at a low. <laughs> Let's build this one back up. <laughs> El Clavo was stuck in the the toddler's head. You saw it. El Clavo means nail. Looks like a big old construction nail. I just showed you the photo. Pretty large. The killer was caught, and the killer also attended this child's wake. And when he was finally caught and asked why he would do so. He said that he was curious if the doctors had removed the nail or not. And they have. And he was very upset about that. So that's who we're dealing with tonight. All right. Now that we have brought down the mood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess. No, I'm not going to go on that soapbox today. Well, why? It was a short story so you can talk. Wow, thanks. (laughs) This day in Talk Murders to Me History, John gives me permission to speak. If you make me a sandwich. (laughs) Well, you know, I I used to be a sandwich artist, so. (laughs) Yeah, it was somebody. (laughs) Eat fresh. They changed their menu, you know. To what? I I have not. Not they were serving Subway sub in a long time. Neither have I. I, I like opt not to go traditionally because That's fair, like you work there and the scent is something you don't lose. Like yeah. you walk in there for 30 seconds and you smell like a sandwich all day. Wasn't there a case where someone tried to bring to court like the five dollar foot long was only 11, 11 inches? inches. <laughs> <laughs> And I think the judge was like, fuck you, goodbye. What, well, dude? <laughs> Dismissed. Yeah, so one of the most major. It's called inflation. And that's what happens when you, you proof know, the bread you... and it rises and then it becomes well, big. Well, you're like, it's a $5 foot long, but probably now it's only a 10 inch instead of a, you know, instead of 12. Well, it's, it's like a 675 foot long now. Yeah. It's or, or, a... or, yeah, or they're going to shrink the sub and still call it a foot long. You know, one of the most famous cases like that out there is the McDonald's hot coffee case but have you seen that woman and those burns burns she got fucked up yeah those that's third degree burns like they were really bad they were really bad everyone makes a case everyone makes fun of it oh you can sue mcdonald's for having hot coffee dude look at her fucking photos bro like she was that poor lady did not know what she was getting herself into when she opened that coffee cup let me bring it up oh yeah, like, I and like through her, through her clothes too. It's not like she was sitting there without pants on and uh, poured the coffee on herself. Oh like, my god, dude. they were really bad. Let me show you this. Photo. I was in my. I saw the first time Crazy. I saw those burns. I was in my sociology class my senior year. Um, Isn't this amazing? This is how we are lightening the mood from a child <laughs> murder. <laughs> is let's look to at an old third, lady's third degree, degree burns. burn photos. What the fuck is wrong? And I don't even remember the original point that I was going to say when John told me that I could actually speak. Oh, God. Oh, my fuck. Yeah, dude. The cops do say caution hot. No, but this is... But, but yeah, like... So it's like John's equivalent of a di- adding a disclaimer in front of our episodes. Yeah, though. mature audiences only. Yeah. So if anyone says that, oh, you can sue anyone for anything, that was such frivolous bullshit, you can tell them to... F- to look up this photo <gasps> here. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. What was the temperature of this fucking car? It must have been boiling. It was it was bo- it was it like, was, like, <laughs> it was like 110 <laughs> degrees or something like that. It was like lava, bro. Yeah. <laughs> And this Holy poor shit. little old lady like was just trying to have yeah. her morning coffee. Yeah, she's uh she's older. I mean, look look at these burns here. Holy fucking shit. Oh <laughs> my god. Jesus yeah. fuck. She's a little this is her right here. Oh <laughs> Lord, she could run me my grandma Blanche. I, I, like I used to we used to make fun of this, but yeah. I hope you got millions of dollars, Dude. lady. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Yeah. Cayetano Santos Godino. This serial killer is also named El Petiso Orejudo. O-R-E-J-U-D-O. Which means in Spanish, little ears. He's also been known as, quote, by the press, quote, a monster and a, a degenerate. And he's also known in the American because uh, El Patiso. He's known as the Little Pest. So, so his name is Little Ears. That's what El Patiso Orihuro stands for. See, I thought Oro, like I thought that meant eyes. So I'm interested into. Maybe no, I'm just Oros. don't know how to speak Spanish. That's Oros. Yeah. Oro. Os. Oros. Oh no. Ojos. Ojos is eyes. Ojos. You're right. Ojos. 
Oh, oh nope. Melones. <laughs> <laughs> that one may have been more accurate. Anyway. What do you think this guy looks like? His name is The Little Ears. So he, that, I mean, he's a serial killer is called by that. It's well, you, like, you did tease us that it was the youngest. So I would say he is a child, but he doesn't have little ears. He has big ears. Well, he's he a is, little person with big ears is what I would say. Well, he's also a grown man at this time. Well, he was arrested at 16, which we're going to get to. He's pretty much a man. But this is what he looks like. He's a teenager. He's not an adult at 16. This is what he looks like. If you can describe him, his name is El Patiso Orihudo, the little ears. Aha, see, I was correct. How many stations do you think he could pick? <laughs> I'd have made that joke. <laughs> So describe this guy with little ears. He doesn't he, have little ears. He has large ears. <laughs> and they are um, protruding quite a bit. I would say I would call him Elefante. So remember, this is in Argentina. He looks Argentinian, right? He looks Hispanic. Yeah. I mean, he could also look Italian, too. Yeah, he's he's a dirty Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 Italian, not dirty. Well, just he has, <laughs> he has darker features. So like that's yeah. typical with Italians or people of the... Latin well, so so Nicole's really smart, so she can tell us why an Italian is in Argentina around this time. Between 1876 and 1926. Wait, he's Italian? Why did a bunch of uh, Italians move to Argentina? Guidos? <laughs> Guidos. Why did a bunch of people from Jersey Shore <laughs> move to fucking... <laughs> First of all, I just want to apologize to the Italians because I think I they're I don't think great. we have many. Oh, I don't know. A lot of people are. I mean, you just don't know, man. Everyone's a little bit of everything, you know? That's yeah. true. El Patiso Orihudo obviously is like calling a big guy tiny. He's got huge ears. And would you guys think that that may have bond him to be i don't know a little violent as a child i mean maybe was was he made fun of well obviously okay. i don't know if you can say that it would make him be violent but it would make him feel self-conscious for sure and he, maybe if that he was insecurity, made bullied, yeah and if that insecurity would lead to him like learning negative coping mechanisms like being violent then yeah sure you could say that indirectly not, caused it not only was he bullied as a child which he was extremely bullied as a child he also is known as the little eared midget so he's oh, also jerk. i know that word's not politically correct but that's what he's called and this is him after his arrest so he is 16 there 16 and he looks like he's like 40 i know right he's deformed how how tall is he no you tell me he's, he's like, not he, much taller than the judge yeah yeah he's not much taller than the other or not much shorter but, than the other guys honestly that's but I'm he's shorter. at full full so uh, he's like just maybe a little under five feet but but his name is the little eared midget which it doesn't really make sense because you would think he's an actual you know small person but he's i don't know he's, he's like five foot that doesn't yeah that's not a midget that is not a dwarf that like he he's doesn't dwarf, have dwarfism no. he's just small okay yeah. so he's let's just, say he's, he's just a little guy I, honestly I, I don't know how tall he is besides that photo let's say he's five foot yeah i, I mean I, that would be i stretching. mean there there are men like you don't have to have a, a genetic disorder to be that short you right. can just be short yeah and he's just short. He's short with big ears. That's it. So he's known as the big eared midget. He's got huge ears. The first violence that he is has inflicted on someone because he's a, he's actually this guy's got more attempted murders than he does murders. So interesting. His number of victims was four confirmed victims, but eight attempted murders from what I found. That's a big difference. Mm. He was born 1896 in Hall on Halloween Day, October 31st. So 1896, all right, 1896. His first violent spree happened in 1904. He was seven years old mm -hmm. when he first started being extremely violent. And in 1904, at seven years old, he's a seven-year-old kid. Now, obviously, the reason for this is he's bullied. His ears protrude quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. He's actually deformed, but he was bullied. So in 1904, at seven years old, he beat to the point of near death a child of two years old, threw him in a ditch. After this, his father, because the police came, they mm -hmm. took the boy and this this man, Godino, to the hospital and, and police station. Father came and got him. 
after that, after that day at seven years old, the father disowned him. Not because of this situation. I mean, that was obviously the, the catalyst. But the father went into Godino's room and under his bed, he found he found a box. What do you think was in that box? A gun. Trophies? Pictures. Trophies. Like, you like take keepsakes. Things, Basketball yeah. souvenirs. trophies? No, no. She means like from a crime. Yeah. From a victim. Baby teeth. <clears throat> the father disowns his own son. After he finds a box under his bed containing a dead pigeon. Oh. In another box right behind that one was several more dead birds. Their eyes had been completely burned out and their wings have been broken. Hmm. He was a animal torturer and killer. He also loved fire. He was also an arsonist. Did he mm, also out out of the, the bed? Three. First violence in 1904. He beats this kid, two-year-old kid. He beats a two-year-old kid to near death using a big stone and throws him in a ditch. You saw the baby from the, the first murder or the first body found. You mm-hmm. saw that baby. How, yeah. And you saw the nail that was shoved in its head. And then you saw the, the killer when asked, why did you even go to the wake? And they saw him crying. He was cr- not only did he go to the wake, but he was crying. Well, why were you crying? Well, the doctor took the nail out. You know, mm-hmm. that's fucked. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's what do you think bad. his childhood was like? Pretty great. I'm right? going to assume it was not pleasant. The family immigrated from Calabria. I don't know if that's right or not. The father was basically out of work. He played guitar on the side of the street. He was an alcoholic, just like his wife. And not only that, his father was syphilitic. There were eight children in total. A lot of kids. And Cayetano being the last born. The father got syphilis from one of the street women when he was playing guitar. He got syphilis and then that syphilis deformed Cayetano's whole body. Plus the alcoholism. He was born with the the big ears and he was a little person, you know. Small. Small. He was small. I don't know if he was second. Yeah. Yeah. That photo you seen of him in prison, that's as tall as he's ever gotten. That makes sense. He he didn't grow anymore. That was it. So let me show you actually the other photos right quick so we can uh, pull anything. But this is him right here as a kid. Mm. I mean, he's not a bad looking kid, but I mean, dude, these ears. uh, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I know it's ironic that they that his nickname was Little Ears, but well, in in you know in school they would call him Little Eardrums, and I know it sounds bad, but I hate. I I know it sounds bad, but I can tell that this kid was bullied because Mm -hmm. just how kids are, man. And the ears like this, there's no way that he was not bullied, like intensely bullied for these fucking things. That does like. Bullying, pure, like, it just makes me so freaking sad. So this is him right here. He did go to Ugh. school for a while, but the bullying was so bad that he just, he he basically drifted from one school to the next. And at seven years old, his father disowned him, which means he's on the street at seven. Mm. Oh, that breaks my heart. Yeah. So this is him right here. So he killed a lot of toddlers and very young kids. How, how do you think, uh, how do you think he did that as far as got them away from the family? So think about that. First, I want to talk about about the Italian immigration from Italy to Argentina just real quick. From 1876 to 1926, there was a large immigration from Italy to Argentina. The basics of this was for generations, they have been sub subdividing this this farmland and they actually got to a point where the farm land became so small, so subdivided and so small that they they couldn't grow crops efficiently enough because, you know, like one little spot is trying to grow this and another one's trying to grow this instead of growing it all in one big spot because they sublet it so much. Mm-hmm. So that plus when the, the wine industry tanked in 1870, that and the, the farms going bust had about six million Italians Flee. And they fled to Argentina first because America wasn't the best place to, uh, it wasn't the uh, the America of the dreams yet. That was later in the 1900s. But at first, Argentina seemed like the best, best place to go. And it was for a while, but then even Argentina went through its own economic demise. But this is interesting because we covered the absinthe episode, episode 10, the murder of Kitty Cat West. We talked about the banning of absinthe. That was also banned 
right after the wine industry tanked in Italy. Obviously, mm-hmm. Italy's the wine country. That's mm-hmm. what every that's what they're that's how they get all their money. Mm-hmm. When they're not producing any grapes for wine anymore, they they don't make any money. That's why they ban absinthe because they were struggling so much. But mm-hmm. then. Six million of these people fled from Italy to Argentina. I've seen different statistics, but up to 60% of Argentinians today have Italian lineages, which is crazy. There are more Italians in Argentina than there are Argentinians. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Anyway, so he is Italian. 1905, he is nine years old. The second violence. There's not a photo of this boy but he was seven years old and he beat another child he beat him with a stone i showed you the one stone that he used to kill the the one baby stone just like that beat this child to near death with this stone he luckily survived 1906 this kid was nine years old this was the first the first actual murder, not the first body found. I showed you the first body found, but the first actual murder was a three-year-old girl named Maria Rose Fasse. He confessed this to the police. They didn't even know he had killed her. But after this whole wake incident, when they found the body, he confessed to all of these murders. They had no idea that he was behind any of these. But he had took this girl, this three-year-old girl, to a wasteland on Rio de Janeiro Street. Now, his M.O. is simple. He looks like a what? A child. Basically, even as an adult, like even as like 13, 14, 15, he still looks like he's like, I don't know, six. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if he takes a three or four year old by the hand and is walking with them, no one's going to think anything suspicious because it looks like just two kids walking hand in hand. That's normal. Right. That, that's what they do. However, that's his ruse. That's how he got these kids away from their parents. You know, the parents are in the marketplace selling their their fruits and, and all the, the vegetables, stuff like that. And they look away for a second and he comes and grabs the hand and they're like walking together. No one says anything because it's two kids walking. This kid is actually 16 years old. He takes this kid to a wasteland away from everywhere. I didn't see any sexual assault, but I'm not sure. He did kill male and female. I don't know. Um, But I don't know if he sexually assaulted or not. I doubt they even checked for that. So that was his first murder. He hit her with the rock and threw her in the, the, the wasteland. That when he did try to strangle her. And it was only years later that he went to, he showed police the location. They were going to dig up the girl's body, but there was a two-story house built there. So they decided to leave it, which that happens a lot, actually. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the survivors. So they found four deceased victims of him. Mm -hmm. No one knows how many he's killed, seven or even more. No one has the exact answer, but we do know that he has a lot of survivors that were at the point of near death. Oh. And these are the things that he did. Was it like a mis- Did he near death? Was it a he felt mercy for them and didn't actually end up killing them? From what I think or no, that's a good point. From what I saw, it just seems like he just hit them with rocks and threw them down a ditch and thought they were dead. <laughs> and then they weren't uh, kind of shit. OK, I mean, so he still probably intended to actually really. Kill them. Yeah. All right. So doing this for a long time, I think I can put this speculation out there. He likes the the torture aspect. He's he's breaking the bird's wings and burning their eyes out. He, he doesn't care about killing. He just a, wants to cause harm. Yeah, he just he just likes the torture aspect. He's a sadist. You know, he he likes to break the the bones, the birds, and everything. I'm not. There were birds in the box that were dead, obviously, but they were probably dead from starvation. Right. They just had broken wings. He just likes to break the wings. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I don't think he cared about murdering these kids, which is why he has more attempted murders than murders. Got it. He would just do stuff like like the following. He would burn their eyes out with cigarettes. He would deform their faces with gashes from broken bottles, and he would even bury some of them alive. Ugh. So no one knows how many he's killed. Some of those alive victims actually escaped. That's how we know that he's buried people alive (laughs) kind of shit. The ruse he used was he tricked these kids with candy. And he was only, you know, 14, 15, 16 when he was killing. He was arrested at 16. So he would pretend he's a child as well. He would say, hey, you want some candy? You know, come walk with me. Grab their hand and walk away from the market. And then to a, a secluded location, 
and then he would torture him. Jesus. So pretty bad, eh? Yeah. Obviously, his background was shitty. You know, his father, mother, both Italians, both abusive alcoholics. Father was syphilitic, and Cayetano was the last one born, and he was born deformed, and the father would get drunk. He would actually force him, the son, to drink, get him so drunk, and then beat the shit out of him, abuse him. Because, you know, he, he looked different. And he oh. would take all of his hate out on this kid. And then at seven years old, like I said, he kicked him out of the house for good. So, I mean, this kid really never had a chance, let's be honest. When he was finally arrested at 16 years old, doctors all agreed that he was mentally unbalanced and that his, quote, ears were to blame for his wickedness, end quote. He was sent to prison where he died at 19, in 1944 at the age of 48. His death wasn't natural, however, it was at the hands of another inmate. Mm. This inmate was furious when he walks back into his own cell and sees that Cayetano has taken this fellow inmate's pet cat and has strung him up. Oh, yeah, you don't, you don't. And hanged him off the side of the bunk. So this inmate killed Cayetano. I don't wow. know how. Didn't see that report anywhere. Mm, wow. But that is that fucking story. Wow. <laughs> and that's all that's all that story. <laughs> Short and quick and you know, boom. <laughs> Thanks, Trim, for the request. Yeah. So I pulled all of that's pulled from good sources, you know, newspapers, Miami Herald. Even though I good translated source. it, I didn't I didn't pull it for any of those bullshit websites out there. Mm. You know. But anyway, that's that story, man. I hope you guys like that. Not much to it. But like I said, this is Talk Murder Me. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. We put episodes out all week long. Be sure to check out our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees. Go to talkmurder.com to see evidence photos and read the blog post on these cases. And if you are feeling frisky, you can support us at patreon.com slash talk murder and become our new Supremo. Our current promotions, you get a Ed Gein comic book, which is really cool. I haven't read it yet. But I've sent a bunch of them out. So you guys should be getting those soon. And you also get a crime photo and some stickers and all that stuff. So until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>